How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today I'm going to be breaking down the top 10 most valuable Canadian dimes from the year 1900s and onwards. Now a lot of these are going to be circulation strikes that you can actually find in your pocket change. Some of them will be varieties and errors and a couple will be specimen strikes. Now the most requested denomination that I have to cover here on my channel is dimes. I'm not exactly sure why that is. It may be because they are a smaller denomination or more common to receive in your change or it could be because there just aren't as many lists and videos out there explaining what to look for. But in this video, I am gonna break down some of the holy grails, because you can be assured that like all the other denominations out there, there are some dimes that are worth an absolute fortune. But we start, but before I do start this list off, I would really appreciate it if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to see more coin collecting content just like this. And then without further ado, what do you say? We get into it and I break down the top 10 most valuable Canadian dimes to look for. So as we start this list off, what I'm going to do is start at the least valuable dime, which is going to be number 10 and work my way up to the most valuable, which will be number one. So let's start this off with number 10, which is going to be the 1951 double die dime. Now 1951 has an overall mintage of 15,079,265. Now this is actually a DDR, the most common place for the doubling to occur is on the reverse of the coin. That's not saying that it cannot occur on the obverse, but usually it will occur on the date or it will occur on the Canada underneath the blue nose. Now, in terms of value, this dime can actually fetch you $10 in a VF condition. So that is anywhere from three to five times spot value, which isn't too bad if you find one of these in your pocket change or coin roll hunting, it's a nice little profit. And it can be worth all the way up to $450 for an MS66 example. Number nine is the 1956 dot dime. Now the overall mintage for 1956 is 16,732,844. Now this variety is extremely rare and basically to identify it, what you want to look for is a little dot in between the nine and the five underneath on the date. Now, one of these can fetch you anywhere from $11 in a VF state all the way up to $450 in an MS65. Number eight is one of the well-known key dates for most of the Canadian denominations, and you can be sure that if you find any of these in the wild, it will fetch a pretty hefty premium, and that is the 1948. With an extremely low mintage figure of 422741 it can be worth $15 in a VF condition, so if you find a 1948 in your pocket change or coin roll hunting, that is a nice hefty little profit, at least $10 to $12, and then it can be worth all the way up to $800 for an MS65 example. I'm honestly surprised that this 1948 is not worth more in a high grade state. Considering it has such a low mintage figure and its scarcity when it comes to high grade examples, it may actually be a good time to pick one of these up. If you do now, you never know what it might be worth in 20 or 30 years. It might actually be worth like two to $5,000 at that point. The 1948 is a very well-known, well-sought-after date. People want these for their registries and collections, and that is actually a pretty reasonable, affordable coin for having such a low mintage figure. Number seven is going to be the 1938 Canadian dime. The overall mintage for 1938 is $4,197,000. 323. Now, one of these can be worth around $6 in a low grade state, so about two to three times spot value, and it can be worth all the way up to $2,500 for an MS66 example. Now, the difference between an MS65 and MS66 is extremely substantial. A lot of the time, when it comes to these older coins, you will see massive price jumps if you go from 65 to 66. So finding an MS66 in an uncirculated roll out there or anywhere basically is going to be extremely tough, if not impossible for anybody. But you never know. There's always a possibility that maybe one has been sitting around in a collection or something like that. And if you ever find one that looks like it is in really good condition, definitely send it off to be graded or get a second opinion. Number six is the 1938 re-engraved date. Now, for the date sequence of 1938, 
1939 and 1940, they are re-engraved date varieties. Um, the overall mintage, like I mentioned in the last coin, is 4,197,323 for 1938. So this variety is included in that mintage figure. The easiest way to be able to identify these re-engraved date varieties is basically just to match it to doubling. It is very similar to machine doubling. Basically, they just re-engraved the dies to add more detail to them because they were pressing so many of them. Now, the 1938 re-engraved date can be worth $15 in a low-grade state. It can be worth all the way up to $1,600 for an MS-65. And I also just want to mention that the 1939 is just about as valuable as the 1938 re-engraved date. It's worth about $10 in a low-grade state and $2,500 for an MS-65 example. So basically, for the date sequences of 1938, 1939, and 1940, you are looking for re-engraved date varieties for all three of those, and they all can be worth a pretty hefty premium. Number five is the 1915 Canadian Dime. Now, this has an extremely low mintage, even for early Canadian coinage. It has a mintage figure of 688,057. Now, it can be worth around $12 in a low grade state and all the way up to $4,000 for an MS65. Now, you are going to be extremely hard pressed to find any Canadian coins from the George V era or earlier that will score in the MS range. They are a lot of the time accounted for already, and usually if you do find them in your pocket change of the while, they will be ground down to a pulp and there will be no more detail on them, and they are basically just worth melt value, but these ones are still worth looking out for. They are definitely rare, and when they have such a low mintage figure, they are extremely collectible and people always want them for collections, and a lot of the time they're actually willing to pay more than the values that I'm actually discussing with you today. Well, we are starting to get up into the nitty gritty right now. So number four is going to be the 1903. Now, the 1903 has a mintage of 500,000. It was also struck at the Heat and Mint, and it has a separate mintage figure for the Heat and Mint strike. Now, when it comes to the 1903 Canadian strike, it is worth around $22 for a VG8 example. So that is at the absolute bottom of the Sheldon scale. And it can be worth all the way up to $6,000 for an MS65. Now, this is an extremely early dime. So like I mentioned earlier, finding one of these that is going to score in a high-grade state is going to be pretty tricky. But if you find one and it even scores in a fine or a AU condition, it is still going to be worth thousands of dollars. So always keep your eyes open for this stuff because you never know what you can find in your pocket change. Number three is going to be one of the most well-known and infamous Canadian dimes of all time. I've covered it in some of my other videos, and there is just absolutely no way you can leave it out of a top 10 Canadian dime list. And that is going to be the Canadian 1969 large date dime. Now, I can personally say that myself and other coin roll hunters has sifted through millions and millions of dollars, if not more, in Canadian dimes to try and find these things. They are some of the holy grails of Canadian coins, and there are only a few that have been found and are graded and accounted for. Now, the overall mintage for 1969 is 55,833,929. Now, if you were to find one of these unicorn dimes, it can be worth anywhere from $13 in a very fine state. So that's pretty near the bottom of the Sheldon scale. And it can be worth all the way up to $24,000 in an AU state. Now, when it comes to identifying this, basically the easiest way that I would say is you want to have a 1968 dime next to it and you want to compare the date. Now, if the date looks more similar to the 1968 then you have yourself one of the rarest coins of all time. If the date looks a little bit smaller than that, then you have a very common coin that is worth 10 cents. It's very funny how that works and the difference between 10 cents and hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars, right? But always keep your eyes out. Always hold on to these kind of coins that I'm saying and check them under a microscope. Check them up close on your phone. You should always do your due diligence and make sure that you are not accidentally releasing a coin that is worth a lot of money back into the wilds of circulation. Number two is the 1913 Broad Leaves Dime. Now, the overall mintage for 1913 is 3,613,937, and there are two different varieties for that date. There are a small leaf and a broad leaf variety. When it comes to identifying the rare one, which is the broad leaf, basically what you are looking for is a single leaf that almost resembles a maple leaf. It will have more detail on it, and the small leaves will be separate. It will resemble more of what I would say is like a branch. 
Now, when it comes to value, this is the most valuable dime in a low-grade state on this list by far. It can be worth around $200 in a VG8, which is at the absolute bottom of the Sheldon scale. So if you were to make a scrap silver purchase and find one of these bad boys, which is not completely out of the question, then you can make some good money off of it. Because a lot of the time, if you go onto eBay or you go onto sites like Atmex, you can buy scrap silver. And a lot of the time when these big companies are moving such massive amounts of silver, they don't really check for varieties and errors like this. They just kind of get stuff in and then send it right back out. So always keep your eyes open when you are buying scrap silver that you are not getting a coin that is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, we have made it to number one on this list. I really hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you find it helpful. I'm definitely gonna be making more videos covering Canadian dimes in the future. We have the pre-1900 Canadian dimes as well as some of the errors and varieties you can look for in your pocket change. And if you guys would like to find out some of the values of your American coins or foreign coins, I definitely suggest that you go check out my playlist, Rare and Valuable American Coins in History and the Most Rare and Valuable Australian Coins. So number one on this list is going to be a date and variety that is extremely infamous among several Canadian denominations. From the penny to the quarter, if you find one of these, a lot of the time you are going to be what I would consider to be decently wealthy after. So number one is going to be the 1936 dot dime. Now, when it comes to the story of the 1936 dot coins, it is estimated that somewhere around 191,237 were actually minted but there are actually only five known specimen examples that have survived over the years. It was said that some were put out into circulation, but all of the ones that are accounted and graded are all graded SP, and that means they are specimen examples. So it is most likely either false that they minted that many or they melted them all down. Now to identify this variety, what you wanna look for is a little dot underneath the sash or ribbon on the reverse of the coin. I guess the mint put those there to identify some of the coins that were actually made in the year 1937, but the date still said 1936 on them. So if you were to ever find one of these, the most likely scenario is that you are going to pull one out of a specimen set. Now there are only a few known graded examples right now, but it can be worth anywhere from $144,000 for an SP-63 all the way up to $250,000 for an SP-66 example. But that's just about it for this one, folks. We have broken down the top 10 Canadian dimes to keep your eyes out for after the year 1900. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna be making more videos in the future covering some of the valuable Canadian dimes and Canadian coins that you can find. So make sure to hit that bell notification so you can see my videos as they are released. And I would like to announce that I have partnered with the company Atmex, which is one of the largest precious metals dealers in North America. They have a website with a massive inventory, bars, rounds, hand poured pieces, New Zealand mint licensed products like Marvel, Star Wars, and Harry Potter. So if you would like to check out their absolutely massive inventory and support my channel at the same time then just click the link down in the description to check out their website but thank you so so much for watching everybody until the next one peace out and have a good one y'all